Hello everyone, welcome to another artwork analysis. Now anybody who's been following fans, fantasy illustration of any kind, such as Magic the Gathering cards or any type of other uh, video game, card game type of thing, would have seen this guy's work somewhere at least, and his name is Sung Choi. He is incredibly good with the very epic scenes, of, especially with the environment, and his work is very realistic and um, with a fantasy twist, of course. So I want to talk about a few things with his work. Uh, first of all, I want to talk about color distribution, even though last week I talked about that as well, but I want to talk about it in, this, um, in the compositional sense. Number two, I want to talk about exposure and how he creates the sense of realism with a very specific uh, uh, type of exposure. And of course, I want to talk about unifying the colors, what he does to balance all of these colors together to make a coherent piece. Now, first of all, I want to talk about color distribution. So color distrib distribution is very simple. I've talked about it several times already. But it's to ensure that your piece does not have any uh, area where there's no there's isolated uh, colors. So what I mean by that is when you look at this piece, all the uh, colors are spread around pretty well so that none of the space is really wasted. So for instance, you can see that the reds are the most prominent features. You can see there are a lot of reds going on. Um, in fact, it is, uh, now this is a little bit off topic, but in fact, the red is the thing that gets you to move your eyes. Um, similar to have, having a line struck through all of these red passages, we are inclined to look at all these reds to, to really look into the focal point. Um, now, of course, this is on top of the fact that we have a giant uh, lizard dragon thing in the background, but... You get my point. The colors are leading towards it. Now, other prominent colors as well. You can see the brown of the ground here leading up towards the lizard dragon here. And of course, you have the darks as well moving towards here. Look at how the mountains as well are looping around like this. So again, everything is moving towards the focal point now that's not to say there aren't anything else to look at so if if we literally had a composition that only had these arrows it probably wouldn't look as well but the fact that he distributed the colors and also created interest with those colors creates a really nice sense uh, of just having a, a lot of things going on and what creates his very epic fantasy illustration scenes now, I want to next talk about exposure. Now, again, something I've talked about previously, but in this case, this is a very realistic uh, side of exposure. So, when you think of exposure, you're thinking about how well lit or how dark do I need a piece to be in order to create the mood as well as to create an appealing composition. So what I always like to do when I talk about exposure is talk about what happens when you were to ruin the exposure, for instance. Now, if I were to do this, this would still be fine because I am, this exposure will still sell the fact that we are looking at this lizard, lizard dragon. It's just the light has been blown up significantly. Let's go back to the original. But the fact that Sung Choi wanted um, a darker scene it implies his art direction. I would have personally liked this sort of exposure, but that's just my personal preference. It's not wrong or right. Um, now, if I were to go really dark, that's when we start really hitting territory that's not going to happen. Um, because, again, we aren't really seeing much here. We lost a lot of definition. This type of exposure, we make the sky prominent, but that's really not what we need. We need to look at the lizard dragon here. So in this case, we need the exposure that would appeal to us, but as well as sending the message that we need for this particular, uh, for this particular piece. 
and it varies between your focal points as well. Let's not forget here. Um, because a lot of cases, we can expose it to something like this. Now, this is not the most appealing image, but what happens when I expose it like this? We notice immediately that the lizard dragon is washed out. We're, expo we're overexposing it. Now, what happens here is we see everything else clearly. So if I were to, let's say, do this, then what we see now is the focal points would be these people here. So if we were to create a piece where we want the focal points to be there, then of course we expose it like this. But Sung Choi, of course, chose a more masterful um, composition here. Absolutely works. Always look into whether you can over or under expose your piece. Always look into that. Um, you wouldn't, you'd be very surprised to find out a lot of your pieces could be better with just the same exact scene, but exposed differently. Um, hopefully that makes sense. Look into my other videos if you want uh, more explanations with different pieces regarding that. Number three, unifying colors. Now, we have a lot of colors here going on, but I've talked about this in the Akihiko Yoshida video, but to unify colors is actually not as hard as you think. We have to have some sort of wash over a lot of the colors because if they were lit in the same environment it is implied that they will be influenced by the same tints as the, uh, each other so what i mean by this is let's look into the shadowed area here uh we, we don't have to deal with the mountains here i'm not gonna deal with them uh, because they are also in the far far background as well so they're influenced by different tone but anyways let's look into the foreground midground area we've noticed that yes we feel the red here we feel the green here but they're all influenced by a very bluish uh, gray here i would say it's some along the lines of the ground of of the snow here so let's put it into let's take it and put it over here so we can feel that the entire foreground and midground because they are in shadowed lighting so basically means that we it is implied that there are clouds or the buildings are blocking the light but they are still influenced by the same subtle lighting everything is influenced by this gray no matter where you go so again this is a very uh, very fundamental part of color theory make sure that when they are lit by the same uh, uh, colors that these are gonna be tinted by something because that is a very easy way to make sure that you unify the colors now of course this gray doesn't uh, work on the stuff that are lit differently so for example here we can see that the midground which is lit by a sunlight we could so uh, very let's just, just exaggerate just gonna bring in white here this sunlight here is creating a new environment for these characters over here which means that these can be you uh, tinted uh, in a different manner than the stuff over in the shadowed foreground so again because they're in a different environment technically they can be lit differently um but they are one in the same they're sort of like in their own universe here and these foreground people are in this own universe um now of course you could go into deeper notes here and say that the entire environment is influenced by um influence so that they even though these two are uh uh, different environments and different lighting uh, because they are still in the same world that they're they aren't too far apart in terms of the colors um you don't want to have super stark cartoony stuff so for example let's say if i were to go for something like this see the orange actually let's put it in a different layer so let's say oh I'm, I'm lighting this character so that his orange is very stark now or let's say let's even be more egregious here 
let's say there's a per person with purple here. Now, even though it could be possible within that lighting because of sunlight, it's not from an artistic standpoint the best choice because again, it's too strong of a contrast of everything else. So despite the fact that it's just different lighting, it's still within the same world. So make sure that it works in this particular context. Um, hopefully that makes sense. But again, really research, really see how uh, artists like Sung Choi really unifies his pieces and you'll find that you'll, you'll choose your colors uh, more wisely. Every artist has their own preferences. Um, you'll find that Sung Choi has this realistic grayish feeling in a lot of his illustrations, not to say everything is like that, but it is something that he utilizes a lot, and that's probably his preferences. Anyways, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.